Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and Thursday can only mean one thing. We've got a new exciting update from the Space Engineers developers, so you're probably wondering what you'll be getting your hands on this week. Now, I have to say, I'm pretty damn excited to announce that there's actual coding. You can actually code your own blocks, you can make them do the things you want, by actually opening up the document and coding it into a file. Now I've got not got an example in the video for you today because I'm still trying to get my head around it, but for what I've worked out, it's running it on a Seesaw Sharp based system and you don't need to know a super amount of coding. It's pretty damn basic and if you've ever done any editing in the Armour 2 engine, it seems pretty damn similar to that. Now moving on, let's talk about some of the blocks that have been introduced. Now this is Darth Biomet's cockpit and you've seen it in my videos before, but now I can officially say it's part of the game and thank God because this cockpit is absolutely beautiful. Now from the outside design it really sets off any fighter. Now the original cockpit has its uses and it looks really good on some ships, but as you can see in this Mark 1 Henry, the introduction of that cockpit can really change the flare, really gives it this sort of aerodynamic feel even though that's not really necessary in space. But from inside, we've got this sharp pointy cockpit, we've got some displays, some readouts, and you've seen this all before, it's absolutely beautiful. You've also got this great view around the cockpit, perfect for them fighter battles. Anyway, let's move on. So moving on to the next block that's been introduced, it is a reloadable rocket block. And when it said this on the item description, I was pretty excited, I was really wondering what we'd be getting our hands on. Now, prepared to the original rocket block, this thing can actually be reloaded through pipes. So we can stick a pipe on top and we can reload it from a cargo container elsewhere in the ship, as well as reloading it through the station without having to manually go to the front and loading the individual rockets. Now, that has quite a number of advantages, but it does have some problems as well. Now, it's three blocks wide and it's four blocks long, so it's one shorter in length than the original rocket pod, but you've not got the accuracy that the original pod does. It's really tightly packed together, and you'll see as we move over there. Now, I've introduced this system onto Henry. I've put it above the actual cockpit, and it seems to work really well. You can feed it into a cargo container. You can just basically develop the big pipe into the smaller pipe, and you can get some really nice sort of reloading rapid fire rocket systems, even though the rockets are a little bit scary to use. Now, if we head over here, I've got some rockets to test. Now, with the double stack rocket pods, you'll notice as they fly out, they fly out pretty much the same as the normal rocket pod, but they've got that one block gap between them. Now, if we head over to the other, you'll notice that the reload and the speed between rockets firing is exactly the same, but you're going to be getting a much tighter group on the rockets. Now, these are both going to have their advantages and disadvantages. Here is a fast reload, and here is a more precise sort of laser beam of four quick rockets. I'll leave you to decide what you think is better. Let's move on. Now, I want to take you through a quite interesting setting that's available to you in your world. Now, I'm going to edit this world, basically go to Advanced, and you'll notice that we've got Respawn Ship Cooldown. So that basically means the time that it's going to take for a respawn ship to actually enter the actual world once you've deployed one. Now we've got some default times, also we've got some default cooldowns, as well as we've got maximum sort of speed, speed up time. So it's going to be really exciting because people can't just be spamming respawn ships after they've died. So basically use them as a resource pool. Now another small but rather useful feature is the ability to drag your inertia dampeners to the menu bar at the bottom. As you can see I've already got it selected and usually you could just press Z and I think Z is a pretty effective way of doing it. But if you are using the G menu or using a drone this is probably the best way of doing it. Now accessing the G menu what I'm going to do is drag the fire cockpit to there and you can see we are presented with the new option of inertia dampeners on and off. Now by pressing number two, we can turn them on and off. Now, it's not that useful in a ship here that I can simply press Z, but in other options like a drone, that might be the only option I can actually do it, turning inertia dampers off, allowing me to orbit around an object and get some really interesting camera perspectives, as well as getting some sort of drifting pass shots so you can have a nice orbiting or drifting camera. Anyway, let's move on. So last but certainly not least, they have better optimized the searching for components in our cargo containers. So if we head over to one of these crates, and say for instance I wanted to look for a certain item, just like a missile or maybe even a display. So if I search up here display, and what will come up is all the cargo containers that actually contain a display. Now if I get rid of this, I'd have to search manually before to all the containers that would actually hold 
such an item. But this makes it a little bit more faster and a bit more efficient. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and expect a little bit of a tutorial on API and constructing your own blocks very shortly. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.